Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to review two of the best choices that you have for a budget 60% keyboard in 2020. 60% are great because they're perfect for gaming and they're pretty small size, meaning they can fit on literally any desk. These two boards are perfect for anyone that wants to get into the hobby of mechanical keyboards or someone who just wants something better than their current one. So in this video, as you've probably already seen by the title, I'm going to be comparing slash reviewing the Anpro 2 and the GK61, both from Banggood. And if you don't know what Banggood is, it's just like a site like Amazon, but it's for electronics rather than everything. And so without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Oh, and by the way, if you guys are interested in buying new mice, keyboards, mouse pads, or anything, Addisync is the best site that you can check out. They have a wide collection of mouse pads ranging from Esports Tiger to Davina and a bunch of others. So be sure to check it out. And if you want to help support the channel, use my affiliate link in the description below. And let's get on with the video. So the easiest way that I can explain these boards is if I review them individually. So let's start this off with the Anpro 2. This board was made by Obens Lab and released back in 2017 at a retail price of $110, but it has gone down to $76 on Banggood, yet somehow it still remains at $110 on Amazon. The Anpro 2 is a great option for anyone who wants a premium build quality. As you can see on the flex test on screen right now, it barely bends at all. And I would recommend this to someone who's looking to take gaming pretty seriously, but doesn't want to make a huge investment such as the Apex Pro or a Razer Huntsman yet. What's really great about the Ant Pro 2 is that even though the switches are soldered in to the keyboard, meaning that you can't take them out, it still comes with a good variety of switch options, such as the main Gateron lineups of blue, red, brown, and black switches, but also comes with the KO box variants of reds, blues, and browns making it pretty interesting and giving it a good variety in terms of switches. Also, the KO box switches are in fact waterproof to a certain point, so if you are going to be drinking something at your desk, I'd recommend getting the box variants with this board. It also comes with an easy to use software made by Obens Lab, and I actually really quite like the software on this one. It's really nicely made. And the stock keycaps are actually amazing for the price point since they are PBT, and the font isn't that bad, but I still did switch mine out. The RGB on the keyboard is also quite good and it's quite bright, especially when you're playing in the dark or with dimmed lights. And it's got a wide variety of effects that you can change around in the software. So for the N Pro 2, I'd give it a 10 out of 10 and I'd recommend it to any average gamer who doesn't want to put a lot of maintenance into making their, to modding their board or making it sound better. And yeah, I just recommend it. It's a great budget option and I really quite like it myself. Now, one thing I wanted to do in this video that you might not see in every other video is I wanted to review these boards from an enthusiast point of view, not just a gamer's point of view. So if you don't want to hear this, you can skip to the sound test, which will be at the timestamp on screen right now, or it'll also be in the description. All right, so for the enthusiast review, the switch options on this board waters a lot. They're still pretty limited. And I would have loved to see some options such as the Gateron Inks or the KO Pro slash KO Heavy switches, which I know are fairly new, but it still would have been nice to see those options. Another thing is that the factory stabilizers are plate mount instead of PCB mount or screw in. And they are factory lubed, which improves the rattling of the stabs a little bit. But the factory lubing, in my opinion, is pretty bad and it dampens the noise of the longer keys more than it should. On my board, there's also random fluff things inside, which I'm guessing is either dust or something from the brush they used to lube it. Either way, it was just really weird. The font on the keycaps isn't the worst in the world, but I would appreciate something that had less of a gamer aesthetic. So, I know you've all been waiting for this. Here's a sound test of the Anpro 2 with KO Box Brown switches, and I haven't modded this keyboard in any way. I'm just typing on a desk map.
All right, so the next board that we have on this video is the GK61. This board was released by a brand called Geek in around late 2018 or early 2019, and there isn't too much information on the brand that made it. I tried to look, but I just couldn't really find anything. Sort of sketch, but the keyboard still sells on Banggood for around $50, but it's not available on Amazon, which is also sort of sketchy. But I mean, mine had no issues in terms of delivery or anything else. It has a similar variety of switch options, but it only has Gateron switches instead of Kales. And uh, the build quality on this board is not that great, as you can see from the flex test that I'm doing right here. But if I had to recommend this board, I would recommend it to someone who's looking for a really cheap option to use. If they're not that serious about gaming or typing, or if they're playing on a console with a keyboard. Now, the reason I'm being so harsh on this board is because it is not that great of a board stock. It doesn't even come with keycaps or switches unless you buy the options from HK Gaming, which have optical switches instead of normal Cherry MX, meaning that the PCB isn't universal to every type of switch. The RGB is quite strong, however, but sadly the switches I bought which are Gateron Blues because I was on a tight budget do not have RGB support. So the light barely shines through, but that's just for my model. It's pretty good without the uh, switches that I have. I would recommend listening to my enthusiast review for this portion or on this keyboard because it will provide some insight on why I was so harsh on this board in this part of the review and how it's actually a really good contender against the AND Pro 2. All right, so from an enthusiast or a keyboard builder point of view, this keyboard is amazing. The best feature about this is that it's hot swap and hot swap means that you can put any switch you want into the board without having to solder or desolder the keyboard. It makes it so much easier and that's also because soldering can be really complicated if you're building a keyboard for the first time and that's also why I got the GK61 for my first ever keyboard build. This changes the entire game because that means for around $50, you are getting the base keyboard, which is a plate, a PCB, and a case, and you can upgrade it to whatever you like, meaning you can get some of the best switches of the market, which are not available with the AND Pro 2, such as the Novel Keys Creams or Holy Pandas. And the stock stabilizers on this board aren't that great either, but the ease of hot swap means that you can easily take apart the board and install screw and stabs which the PCB provides support for. So with all that out of the way, I hope you can understand why I pitted this keyboard against the AND Pro 2 and why I think it's a good contender. So now let's move on to a sound test of the GK61 with Gateron Blues. So in conclusion, both of these keyboards are great contenders for a budget gaming keyboard and I would easily recommend both, but the AND Pro 2 does technically win overall. Because as a base board, the AND Pro 2 is the easiest to set up and use without any extra work, it's literally plug and play. However, if you're willing to go the extra mile to pay for switches and keycaps and maybe even lube them to install them yourself. The GK61 is miles ahead of the AND Pro 2 if you just put in some of the extra effort. Alright, well thank you so much for watching. That's it for this video. I hope this helped you in finding out what keyboard to buy for whatever use case you may have, whether that be typing or gaming. If you guys have any questions on both of these keyboards, I'll be responding to all comments that ask me, so feel free to comment and I'll try to reply to it as soon as possible. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like this one drop a sub, and follow me on my Twitter account, which is linked in the description below, for behind the scenes and updates on new videos. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye!